Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. Here we are. Actually, this is going to be episode 5 of American Horror Story Freak Show. A lot of stuff went on today. whole lot of stuff went on today. Okay, so we're dealing with Mr. Spencer, which is the guy who's the counterpart of the fortune teller chick. And we're looking at, you know, they showed us a lot of ideas that he had is basically what they were showing. And... He doesn't only want to get our freaks and take them away. His plan is to basically kill them. His plan is to kill them and kind of mummify them, kind of type of thing, and put them into a, 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 a some type of showing, a real morbid showing for people. And it's all about this here money, but... His whole thing is basically killing them, you know, just getting them, killing them one by one, putting them in these boxes and showing them off. It, it's crazy. So we're just going to talk about all of his little stuff and let's get him out of the way because we had a lot of other more interesting things going on. But we kept getting, you know, into his mind and I'm trying to see, I'm like, wait a minute. And we got a little confusing at a, at a point because I thought some of the stuff was really going on, but it wasn't like he had a plan to kill the twins. He's going to give one of the twins um, a cupcake with poison and watch the one, watch them die and then basically cut their head off at the shoulder, that kind of thing. And then you're, you're basically seeing him fantasizing about these things is basically what it is. Um... Literally, and then we found out that the um, fortune teller girl, she actually does know that he is gay. She knows he's gay, and he was doing, he was unpacking, and some little mail magazines fell out of his bag, and she told him, and I thought I would die. She told him, you know what, she said, put that away, get rid of magazines, because the only thing that people hate more than freaks are poofs. Now, <laughs> I've been around a long time. I have never been referred to as a goddamn poof. I thought I would die. I said, what the hell is that? A poof. Okay, so, whatever. So that's a new one for y'all. Poof. All right. Anyway, moving on. He, um, he continued on with that. They showed the whole thing about the twins. He's, but what he actually was doing... This was in real time. He was basically trying to get at the twins and Elsa. He was telling Elsa, yeah, you know, I could put you on TV with your own show, this, that, the other. Because at first, Elsa wasn't going for it. You know, she's old. So she's giving, oh, no, motion picture is the way to go. And this, that, thing, and the other. And he's like, no, 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 TV. Just think of it. You and everyone's home at the same time. So he basically sold her on the TV idea. And I'm going to tell you how it happened. Because Elsa opened the show that night. Baby. She got the singing. The folks gave. Girl, bye. Get on out of here, honey. You know, they really were only there to see Jimmy, you know. Because Jimmy's the new hero. So, try they got to throw a popcorn at her baby, giving her girl. Let that popcorn shut your dick sucker out of Oh, she was horrible. She was horrible. And um, then he was able to sell her the idea about TV after the people weren't receptive to that foolishness. He was doing the same thing to the twins. Had them thinking they're going to have their own show. You know, just he's very manipulative. He was just manipulating back and forth, back and forth. The girl is not feeling it. She's really not feeling it. The fortune teller child, she's not feeling it. She's like, I don't want to be a part of any murders and all that. And he's telling her, she said, because I got to go live at the tents. I need more percentage. You know, I need more money and all that. So that was that. She basically goes to Jimmy and she, you know, the bitch can't really read palms. That bitch is full of shit. But she told Jimmy, she's going to read his palm and she told him, there's a man coming here. He's going to tell you lies. Do not listen to him. He's lying and you need to get out of here now. Just go. Just go. And, you know, Jimmy basically was like, you see all that, this, that, the other. And he kind of made a play for her to try to kiss her. She was giving, no, no, no. You know, and that's what she told him. She said, you got a future, but I'm not in it, Jimmy. You need to go, and you need to go now. Like, leave now. And he's like, you know, all bummed out because she don't want nothing, child. So he goes on about his business. Um, Let's see. There's a whole bunch. I just got to figure out where I want to go with you guys and keep to keep this all cohesive. Oh, okay, here we go. This is where we'll go. So that's basically all really we've seen of them. 
Okay, so we'll get back to them next week or so. Okay, so over at Dandy's house, let's do this. Over at Dandy's house, his mother comes down. It's the morning after he didn't did what he did. You know what he did to my girl, Dora. And he done off Dora. She said he didn't clean up anything. She's still laying down there on the floor with her neck split. So the mother's like, Dora, I don't hear any percolating, darling. This, that, and the other coming down. Sees her laying on the floor. He comes down, mother's screaming. He coming down, he look, gives her this bullshit, and is like, oh, mother, someone came in our house. They broke in and they killed Dora. And the mother was like, shut on up. You did it. You know you did it. Go to your room. I don't want to see you again. Now, I said my kids to the room about breaking toys and knocking my shit over. I ain't sent no motherfucker to no room about splicing up with no motherfuckers neck and leaving them laying on my kitchen floor. But whatever. Child, that's ridiculous. But he's, she sends him to the room. He's leaving out the um the room and he's like, and then he gets to the corner and he's like, I said, oh, you crazy motherfucker. Oh, I can't stand him. I cannot stand him. Oh, he gives me such Jeffrey Dahmer tease. I can't take him. And you know what? And the bad thing, he's worse than a goddamn clown. Anyway, I'll get to it in a minute. Just keep on hanging on with me, y'all. So, that's that. We find out later, good old Dandy and his mama now, here they go. They out there, they ain't got these people to dig this hole. So, don't question me on how deep to dig it, just dig it. They're going to bury Dora in the backyard, okay? And put new flowers. Jimmy's given very much of, oh, yes, see, she won't have died in vain, mother. Beautiful flowers are going to come up, and she'll be out here every time we come out here. Foolishness. And then she gets to telling him basically about how his father was basically a serial killer as well. A privileged serial killer. And she's giving, you know, that's part of the fact of them just being so rich and just don't have nothing else to do. So they kill them, motherfuckers. I said, okay, whatever. So that was that. He was telling her, he said, mommy, I wanted to be an actor and you never would let me. This, that, thing, and the other. So he's all in his head with his craziness and all of that going on. He ends up... um. Going over, you see him working out, and he's building himself up and telling himself that he's so important, and, and he's going to be the best actor ever, and, and this, that, and the other, but he's basically decided that he's going to be a serial killer, and he wants to be very popular at it, because his mother made a comment about Jack the Ripper, so he thinks this is who he's going to be now. He's going to be as popular as Jack the Ripper. Go right ahead, honey. Go right ahead. Okay, let's switch over, and then we're going to come back. To Dandy's ass, okay? Doing all this business, when they're doing the show, they're getting the show all together, they couldn't find the strong man, okay? They didn't know where he was. Here it was, he was gone, and I'm going to tell you in a minute where he was at. But before we even get to that, they said Jimmy to go find him, okay? Jimmy goes over. Angela Bassett, um, you all keep telling me her name, Desiree, Desiree Triple Tits. She's over there and she's getting drunk. You know, she's just miserable from all the fight that they've had and they're not having sex at all of this business. I'll tell you why in a minute. They go on and um, basically Jimmy does the same thing. You know, he's, he's feeling sorry. He confessed to her about what happened to me. And the fact that he killed the man and all this. And she was like comforting him. He went to go try to kiss her. Well, we know she's a slut, right? So, and she ain't had none and God knows when. They go ahead and she kisses him. And then, you know, he starts patting her up. And she's like, oh, come on, Jimmy, make me feel something. Come on. So, of course, you know, old nasty hand. He goes and gets her baby turned upside down, baby. And he's getting ready to give her the business. Okay, I don't know, Jimmy didn't even, I don't know, he been lobster claw on folks so often, I guess he don't even try to use his little meat, honey, but whatever, he went right to the hand, baby, threw it up in her, and she was giving, oh, oh, Jimmy, and then the next thing you know, she's like, stop, 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 so she's babbing on him, and there's all this blood, so they're like, oh my God, so he's trying to take her, he's like, I need to take her to the hospital, this, that thing, and the other, and his mother comes along, Ethel, the bearded woman, 
And she's like, no, you got to go to the show and do all this. I'm going to take care of this. So Ethel went with her to the doctors. She said, you know, I was messing around with Jimmy and and it was feeling good. But then it felt like, I don't know, he did something that felt like he split me in two. Well, what ended up happening was she literally was miscarrying. And it's not, I don't think it wasn't really Jimmy's fault. It was, it was going to happen anyway. The baby was never going to make it, but she didn't even know she could conceive. Okay. Cause she's supposed to be this here, her Aphrodite. Here it turns out she, she was basically miscarrying the baby. That's where the blood and all that came from. Um, we found out that when she was born, she was, um, her mother, her grandmother, or whoever, the midwife, whoever it was, told her, girl, you finally got your little boy, honey. His name was Derek originally. But what happens was, she was never a boy, ever. She was never a boy. Um, when she was 12 years old, that's when her boobs started growing. And then it was, a, you know, the freakism is basically the third one. And the doctor basically told her, she's like, well, what about my penis? She's like, that's not a penis. That's an enlarged clitoris. You know, she was never a boy. Her freakism is that third boob. The doctor told her that he could surgically, you know, plastic surgery, remove one of the boobs, um, take her clitoris down, you know, file it down to where it won't be, you know, sticking out like that. And she's a 100% woman, but with her age, if she wants to have kids, she needs to go ahead and have them now, but she can definitely have children. So she was really happy about all that. When the strong man comes home, Basically, she tells him what she found out. They got into a little argument, and he told she told him, when the doctor gets done fixing me, I'll be too much woman for you anyway. Fuck you, I'm out of here. Honey, and she was just didn't want to be bothered with him, because Ethel had then already told her that um, Jimmy was his son and all of this. So, now, that was all that. Now, let me go a little deeper into where the strong man was before he came home, and they couldn't find him, and also why him and girlfriend... Wasn't having all this sex. <clears throat> Come to find out, two things happening at one time. Once Dandy got all dressed up and he decided he was going to go out and pray on people because his mother had told him, you know, that his dad used to go pray on people that people wouldn't be looking for. You know, she's saying nowadays, you know, people come up missing the people we're looking for. Well, that just stuck right in his head. He went right to a gay bar. Immediately. Didn't I tell y'all he gives me Jeffrey Dahmer tease, honey? He went to the gay bar to do his business. He's going to find somebody he thinks nobody's going to be looking for. Anyway, at the same time, strong man is in the bar. Here, he done fell in love with this gigolo who is an artist and he pays to sit there and, and the artist is drawing and they have conversation, but they, and they've had relations and all that. He done fell in love with the little guy. And all of this. This is why there's the issue. He's fucking the little boy. And this is why he can't go up and fuck triple tits. Because shall he be done? He's tired. And all of that. And he's missing shows and coming up missing and all that. Always running behind this here gigolo. So that was that. He, You know, we found that out. He literally went on. And once she told him everything about the baby and she gave a baby and all that stuff, he wasn't even thrilled about it, you know. They got in that argument. He told, when she said that the doctor was going to fix her, baby, the straw man went and see the doctor and broke his hands backwards, just broke them both, and then threatened to kill his family if he ever put his hands on her. He's an evil, crazy son of a bitch, that goddamn straw man. But anyway, so that was that for them for this episode. We'll see what goes from there. Because, you know, you can't just go to the doctor's office and fuck them up and know nobody say nothing. So I'm really believing there's going to be some shit with the strong man trying to explain himself out of that and this as well. Okay, when um, they were in the bar, strong man got a little loud with the little gigolo. Because gigolo's like, child, this is all business, child. You paying for, for this and, and I ain't feeling all that you talk about. So anyway... After Straw Man leaves, Dandy comes up to the table, and I knew then it was going to be an issue. I said, oh, goddamn, here we go. So, anyway, um, Dandy lures the guy out of the bar, takes him to the trailer of the goddamn clown. He gave the guy $100. See? All money ain't good money. It really ain't. $100 to get all fucked up. 
He goes up in the trailer. Daddy, the guy like went for me. Daddy's like, I'm not a fruit. You know? And the guy's like, okay. You know, he's like, let's just play a game. We'll both turn around. We'll take all our clothes off. And then we can count to three. And we're going to turn around. And whatever magic happens, happens. So they strip down to their little underwear. And he did one, two, three turns around. Baby Dandy got on the clown's mask. And got that goddamn the little scissors things. Child, and they got the going out of honey. He got the stabbing about honey. And I said, you know what? Little gigolo, that's what you get. Because you're stupid. And Dandy foolish. But he was stabbing him, stabbing him, stabbing him. Child, Dandy couldn't even do that right. He done got the motherfucker. And the little boy's all like laying there. And he thought he had done killed him. He's like covered in blood. He thought he had really got down with it. You know, he was all happy. And then the guy coughed and spit up some blood. And then Dandy's like, ah. Uh. And the guy gets up and he's like running. He's like, help me, help me. He jumps on his back and starts cutting him. And it did all this bullshit. So then you hear Dandy say, you're supposed to be dead. You know, just he's ridiculous. He's a spoiled brat. Can't do shit right, just like Pay LaBelle said. So then he finally thinks he got him killed, got him dead. And he says, Now, the, the next thing, you got to dispose of the body parts. So you see this fool that went to cutting the boy up and taking the, the limbs. He took, he cut his arm like up to here and took the arm and threw it in a, a tub of acid. He comes back in. To cut the next limb. Child, a boy is still living, honey. And he's like, stop it. You got to die. You're making me feel bad. You know? So he's trying to cut the other arm. You can hear the boy, like, struggling. It was just a fucking mess. Dandy is a clown. And I cannot wait for somebody to fuck his ass up. Because it's going to happen. In the midst of all that, Gabrae Sidibe is Patty LaBelle's daughter. She start calling and looking for her mother. Okay, so the shit's about to be on. Anyway, so we're sitting there. Um, the lady's talking to her on the phone. She's like, oh, yeah, your mother probably won't call you for about a month or so, girl. She's so busy. And this, and the other. She told her, you tell my mother to call me as soon as she gets free. Then the woman started talking kind of crazy because she's blaming herself about Dandy and the way he is. She's asking her questions, saying, you know, when you and Dandy were younger and you used to play together, this, that, the other. She's Gabriel was like, girl, you wasn't never around, child. Get on out of here. You're making me very uncomfortable, girl. Tell my mother to call me, honey, and hung up on her. So that was that. Next thing you know, you see Dandy come in the house drenched in fucking blood, giving mom this, that, thing, the other. And I'm like, he is so ridiculous. Fix it. Just fix him. He's, he's fucked up. But anyway, so that went on. Elsa, back at the tents, had went and told the twins, you know, because she seen them and she seen that Mr. Spencer was dealing with them and then they had this little talk where there's this problem. She's like, oh, I'm going to take you to see the best um, designer and seamstress in town so y'all can get ready for you alls TV show. It didn't sound right. She told them get it, make sure they get a good night's sleep and all this kind of carried on. And the next thing I did, they're like, well, I thought we were going downtown. She's like, oh, no, just trust me. Trust me, I, I I have you. And she was all dressed up and everything. I laughed because the little girl, that little uh, little baby doll looking little child that I just love, Hattie, she was doing her nails. She said, these have to be perfect because I'm going to be having my photo shoot. It has to be perfect. And little girl says, okay, Miss Elsa. I love that little thing. That little, she had a little thing, little girl. Um, So she gets out there and then she takes them out. And I'm like, I don't know where they're going. Next thing you know, you see the doorbell ringing, honey. And then Dandy's mother goes to the door. Baby, it's Miss Elsa. And Miss Elsa gives her, I brought you something that you wanted. And that's where we end it. Baby, what the fuck is Elsa getting ready to pull? What is she getting ready to pull? I don't even I don't even know which way to go with this, guys. Devin, leave it down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think is that woman wants them twins for. I don't know. That's kind of weird. But leave it in the comments. You can thumbs up or thumbs down this video. Um, you guys know how that works. Either way, I will definitely be back here. I, I'm really loving this. Loving this. I think the shit's getting ready to be on. But next week, I'll be right back here with you guys. See you later, guys. Have a great week, okay? Bye.